跑差不多是吧？拖再到四四号五号码头。And today we are in Shanghai, and uh, we are probably you've already seen what's happening before uh, 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 behind me. Uh, today we are going to uh, do a live streaming about the undocking ceremony of China's first domestically built large cruise ship, Adora Magic City. And first, I would like to uh, uh, give you an what's happening over there. A Undocking ceremony is now happening. Uh, leaders from relevant departments from the uh, uh, China shipbuilding, uh, state shipbuilding company are delivering uh, speeches uh, for today's uh, ceremony. And uh, in about 10 minutes' time, the undocking will officially start. So first, I would like to introduce or explain a little bit about what does undocking means. What's the undocking process look like? So now we are seeing the Adora Magic City. And uh, it's now sitting in its building dock. That's where it is uh, uh, locating uh, for the past over three years. The ship was cons started construction uh, in 2019. And after over three years construction, uh, it's now waiting to be pulled out of the building dock. We see the smaller ships over there near its side. The smaller ships will pull the uh, Adora Magic City out of the building dock and right there, there, over there is the we see the waters there is the Yangtze River Delta uh, it's the estuary of the Yangtze River Delta and the undocking process means the uh, ship the cruise ship will be pulled out of the building dock and moved to another dock near the East China Sea so it sounds very simple but actually it takes a lot of efforts and for the past six days uh, many preparations are done for this very moment uh, starting from June 1st uh, the ship was first uh, floated uh, in this building dock and then a series of final tests are done before the undocking process and now uh, everyone on the ground are waiting for this moment to come and uh, next I would tell you something about uh, what's unique or what's special about Adora Magic City first I would like to start with the name Adora Magic City at the beginning the the ship is called Adora and then it, it changed into Adora Magic City and if you know Shanghai you know Magic City is the nickname of Shanghai and uh, so from the name itself it shows uh, where the ship is born and uh, also the ship is up over 370 meters long and over 37 meters wide it has over uh 200 and uh, 2700 cabins on of the ship and has the capability of accommodating over 5,200 passengers. So it's a it's a it's a very large cruise ship. And right over there, we take a closer look at the safety boats because uh, for large cruise ships, it's very important uh, to keep everyone safe since every, each journey may last from one week to one month. So the safety boats, although by the look from here, it seems to be small. But actually, each one of them has the capacity of accommodating up to 300 people. And there are 10 safety boats on each side, so 20 in total. And that means... <laughs> now, it's the fireworks are just ready to mark... Fireworks displayed, sirens ringing to mark the occasion, to mark the docking ceremony of China's first domestically built large cruise ship, and it will start very soon. The entire process will last for about 30 minutes.
And everyone here on the ground is uh, waiting for the undocking to start. And uh, first, uh, and uh, dear, uh, 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 about one month later, uh, about one month earlier, I talked to one of the engineers and uh, uh, go inside the ship. So let's take a look of uh, what's. Uh, 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 let, uh, let's take a look of the uh, report I did a month ago. This is Adora, China's first domestically built cruise liner. Weighing over 130,000 tons, it's the largest passenger vessel that China ever built. Now it's sitting quietly in the northeast tip of Shanghai and almost ready to sail. We are now on top of China's first domestically built cruise liner, Adora. This place will be perfect for sunbathing and chatting once the vessel begins operations. Enormous efforts has gone into the construction of the ship. The liner has 25 million components, double the number needed for building an aircraft carrier. Ma Ling is one of the few female engineers in China's shipbuilding industry. She and her team are now working on the testing of the ship to make sure every function is running normally when sailing in the ocean. But as someone who's been working in this industry for over 20 years, to make this ship alive is nothing like any previous vessels. What's making the testing job so difficult is not only the size, but also the high standards for both comfort and energy efficiency. For example, the air conditioning will automatically stop once you open the door to the balcony. Now the ship is about to be delivered this year, and the final preparations are in full swing. The factory has an average of 3,500 workers on the ship per day. For the entire team, the days during the trial run will be sleepless, but they all look forward to the day when Adora sails the oceans. To all the workers who have been dedicated to the first cruise liner, the construction has provided a lot of experience, making the entire industry chain more complete. And now, China's second cruise liner is also on its way. Wu Bin, CGTN, Shanghai. Welcome back. And uh, so this is, we are now in Shanghai, and uh, we, today we are doing the live streaming of China's first domestically built cruise ship. It's undocking. It's the first time it left. Uh, it, it leaves its uh, building dock since it started construction in 2019. And uh, after today's uh, undocking, uh, two trial sales will be conducted before its delivery later this year. And uh, let's take a look at there. The, now the smaller ships has already uh, start their engine and and will and is and is moving the Adora Magic City, the large cruise ship, to out of the building dock. The entire process will last for about uh, 30 minutes, and everyone is uh, uh, here to try to take a picture and uh, witness this moment. It is one of the very important uh, points before its official delivery that is expected to happen in uh, uh, during the uh, 6th China International Import Expo during uh, November. And uh, now let's switch which to another different angle to uh, see the entire process of the undocking. I could see those several tugboats. The tugboats are pretty spectacular. And they are covered by the white pieces of cloth to avoid any damage to the paint. 
Just in case that the tugboat might have clashed against our cruise, thus damaging the paint on the cruise. We will go upstairs for a better view. Let's see if、uh, there will be any harm to the signal. Is this also a cabin? It's like a maze. Now we come to the tenth floor, at the back of the deck. This is going to be a swimming pool in the future. We could basically see the structure of the swimming pool with a fountain, and on top, covered by the white cloth, that's going to be a playground for the children. It's a very clear view at this angle. Now the ropes are tightened already. Signaling that、uh, this cruise is about to move very soon. This is the main tugboat. This is the one tugboat pulling the cruise out. Our cruise has engines as well. Why not just move with our own engines? We have to do commissioning under the water. For the engines to work, but we haven't done the commissioning yet. The second reason is、uh, there is very limited space for the cruise. The docking or undocking of cruises, even in operation, have to rely on the tugboats. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be dangerous. That's easy to understand. Just like the airplanes, before taking off on the runway, there will be such trolleys dragging the airplanes, and it's economical and energy saving, also safer. As you can see, it's already moving. The tugboat is pulling the cruise towards the left in order to pull it out. There are some risks of clashes. 
For example, that tugboat is trying to avoid any clash against the West. It's quite a technical job. It requires very close coordination, otherwise there might be clashes, just like the ants pulling the elephant. Two months ago, the plan of undocking was laid out. Those staff members are very experienced. So this plan is um, well prepared. And also today we have a very clear weather. Two days ago it was raining and windy. Even this morning we had some rains, but in the afternoon it's all clear. We are mainly concerned with the wind velocity. For the on-docking process, it has high requirement of the wind intensity. That's why we have to calculate like uh, the waves and the wind before undocking. And also the water flow, the resistance, friction, how many tugboats do we have? do we need? We have to have very stringent calculation. It's really beyond our imagination. Undocking is more than just pulling the crews out with several tugboats. Your past experience was mostly about the other types of boats. This is the first domestically made large crews, and it's also the first process of undocking for such a large size of a boat. We suddenly saw such large tonnage boats. That's right. It has a very high height and a lot of cabins on both sides. That's different from the previous boats we manufactured. The one anchoring right next to us is also a high tonnage boat. It's closed mostly. There were not so large areas of receiving the wind, just like our crews. It's tugging the crews towards the middle. You could judge by the angle of the tugboat. From our angle, the right side rope is very much tightened, so it's pulling our crews towards the left. We have to keep a distance between, just in case of any clash. This is the main channel of Yangtze River. It's a busy waterway in Yangtze River. You could see a lot of bulky commodities boats. This is really a busy estuary. Will such hustling and bustling be an impediment to our undocking? We could see the patrol boat by the public security and the maritime patrols, a lot of working boats. We have to have uh, coordination with them beforehand, and they will try to get out of our way. I can see that uh, those maritime vessels are closing this area for the purpose of undocking. I could see tugboats on two sides as well. I could see another tugboat on the right side. The tugboats are covered by the white cloth just in case of any damage caused to the crew's paints.
So the preparation job is still ongoing, and we will invite Mr. Shen Jingyu to introduce more. Welcome back to the site of undocking for the first domestically made cruise. We are now in number two pyre. And as you can see with the tugboats in operation, the first independently made supersized cruise in China is now undocked. The stern of the boat is already out. And that is the first independently made supersized cruise in China called Adora Magic City. It's also the premiere of this cruise in the world. We invite Mr. Yang Xing, responsible of the manufacturing of this cruise. What do you think of uh, the posture of this cruise? The undocking speed is quite normal. It's going on smoothly and uh, the position is correct. As you can see in the camera, we have eight plus one tugboats. They're all in their designated places. In addition to the nose and the stern, on the right side, there are also some tugboats, and the two other boats are pushing from the front. We can see eight tugboats. They have very clear positions. And the one tugboat at the stern is the main source of power. That's right. The other three tugboats are for protection and localization. Once this cruise is out of the dock, there will be the water flow from the Yangtze River. So the other tugboats will try to offer some power to push it against the water friction. Okay. On the right side, we can see a rope. We could see that the cruise is slowly moving. Those side ports are visible in our camera. The speed is about 10 meters per minute. Another highlight of this cruise is the lifeboat colored in yellow. We call them the yellow bees. They are very handsome, and every lifeboat can accommodate 300 people. For a 12 meters length of lifeboat, it can accommodate and save 300 people. That's unimaginable. Days ago, we had uh, the cruise tests. Uh, our reporters have visited uh, the lifeboats as well with accommodation of uh, 340 people. So those life lifeboats play a very important role in securing the safety of the passengers. From the appearance, this cruise is super big. And the size is a stark contrast to the size of the tugboats. From the height of the cruise, you could feel how big of this cruise. 
So the first independently made cruise in China is going to be pulled out and undocked with the help of uh, eight plus one tugboats. It's going to get out of the busy waterway of the Yangtze River. Now the steering is facing outward. And after being undocked, the crews will be anchored at number four pier. And they will be oriented to number two pier. So after pulling it out, the crews will take a turn naturally and then be anchored at number four. Now we can see the name of this cruise called Adora Magic City. Starting from the magic city of Shanghai, this cruise will sail towards the world. For the Chinese people, this is also a glorious moment. This is um, another milestone for the ship manufacturing sector. Yes, we are coming close to that moment of milestone. After the delivery, we could safely say that all of the milestones in the history of shipbuilding have been accomplished. Since Adora is about to be undocked, I believe that everyone is feeling proud. The supersized cruise building is a very difficult task worldwide. Cruise manufacturing technologies are mainly dominated by Europe and America, especially the supply chain. The supply chain is now dominated by overseas manufacturers right now. But with this independently made cruise in China, we are capable of independent manufacturing. With the previous years of accumulation in terms of the manufacturing and management, we have acquired certain ways. As we know, this cruise has over 25 million components. It's just like a big city floating on the ocean. To establish such a big city, we need to have a very complete system. It's a huge project. So in the manufacturing process, we have to have consistent coordination across different stages. It's very challenging. You make the point. We need hundreds of systems and 25 million components and parts. We have to coordinate organically all of those systems. That's a huge test of us. Production, organization, resource distribution, and planning must work cohesively. In the past four years, we felt for ourselves complexities of cruise building. But we accumulated some experience added by our advanced management experience and methodologies. We have grasped initial methodologies of uh, the cruise manufacturing. Now, the cruise bow is moving when the cruise bow is also out, that signifies that undocking ceremony is completed. For a cruise, what is the significance of undocking? Not just for cruise, for all sorts of boats, undocking is a very important moment. And for our cruise, it also represents that the first domestically made cruise has come to a stage-by-stage stage achievement. 95% of this project is completed by this time. And from another sense, this cruise is able to operate. Since it's a boat, it relies heavily on the water. For the boat, 
To float on the water is just like an infant being born. As you can see, this cruise cannot sail with its own power right now. It still needs to learn, just like the infants, the toddlers learning to stand on their own. We also need some systemic commissioning and internal design construction, just like the infants learning to speak and walk. We also have to tap into the functionalities of this cruise. There's quite a metaphor. Today, it is undocked, just like being born as a child. The cruise already has its heart. Undocking is like its birth. In the future, there will be test sale. Uh, that's going to be another big examination, after which time this cruise will be ready. And then we will deliver this cruise, meaning that uh, this cruise finally enters into the workforce to contribute to mankind. Many people present for the ceremony are gathering together at the gate of this dock to witness this historical moment. I believe the majority of the attendees today have been part of the construction process. Right now, they are witnessing this moment of undocking. They must have mixed feelings. All of the attendees have participated in the designing and construction phases of this cruise. The crews have been built from the steel panels, and now they are feeling very excited to see it coming into shape. We also look forward to successful testing and delivery in the next two months. For example, the internal design completion and the test sale. Actually, the outside appearance is just uh, one part about uh, the completion of this uh, cruise, the entertainment facilities, the luxurious Internal designs are yet to be improved for passengers in the future to truly feel what it's like sailing on such a big cruise, as big as a big city. As a luxury cruise, it relies on the power system. And more importantly, for thousands of passengers on board, this cruise must be able to offer entertainment offerings, catering businesses, and leisure services. The first independently made cruise is completely out. The main body of the cruise is out of pier number two. As required, the tugboats have finished their undocking business, and then the cruise will continue its sailing on the main channel. Because of the water depths, we have to ensure safety of undocking process with the help of the tugboats. From where I am standing, I can see that uh, this big cruise is sailing slowly. The 8 plus 1 tugboats have dragged this cruise to its designated position. And next, the body of the cruise will take a turn. That's right. When this main body of cruise is dragged to the main water channel, there will be a turning of this cruise. It's going to be in parallel to this pier in order to be anchored to number four pier.
Now we can see the aerial shot very close to this cruise. Days ago, we paid close attention to the lifeboat test placed on the deck number four, and also on top of this layer on deck number five. It's completely covered by the white cloth. So why is that? In the future, that deck will be an important leisure walkways. We will put some reclining chairs on deck number five. Now it's still under construction. We haven't completed the construction yet. That's why it's covered by the white cloth. That's to ensure the smooth work to be continued. We can see those uh, boats sailing at the Yangtze River estuary, very busy estuary. The tugboats are standing ready right now. They're not pushing the cruise yet. Today we have a very good weather. The wind intensity is mild, and the two pulling tugboats can control the route of the travel. The other tugboats are just standing ready. For the large cruise on docking, it must have high meteorological requirements. That's true. As has been mentioned, about 13,000 square meters on the side of the cruise is the receiving area of the wind. That's a huge area. That's why it requires huge support from the tugboats. We have calculated uh, the uh, working conditions under different scenarios, for example, the wind velocity, the water flow rate. We have a lot of contingency plans. Now the weather is premium. So it's going on as scheduled. We can see the distance. The pushing tugboats on the side are coming close to the cruise. So the cruise is trying to take a turn. First of all, the cruise is completely out of number two pier, and also the cruise is trying to change its position and a direction. That's right. The cruise is changing its direction along the Yangtze River. Now it's changing direction so that it will get into the main water channel. With the assistance from the tugboats on site, the cruise is trying to stay in parallel to the main water channel. We can see another tugboat is uh, coming close to its designated position. The tugboat comes from the other side. It's an uh, additional protection, assisting the cruise to take a turn. It can also help to ensure that in the Anchoring process to number four pier, the crews will have a safe distance from the containers placed at pier number four. Because of the good weather condition, 
the targeting process is going on very smoothly. I can see the words Adora Magic City printed on the stern. In the future, um, the stern will be the leisure area. Yes. The swimming pool and the decks will be open to the passengers for leisure. I can see that the piers have uh, been occupied by a lot of containers. Almost every pier has accommodated at least two containers. For example, 130, 70,000 tons of um, the boats for bulky commodities. We hope to replenish the production line and build up our brands. Shanghai is also the birthplace of uh, the private sector shipbuilding business. Actually, on um, the Yangtze River, there are three main ship manufacturers. So Yangtze River estuary is really the first place of the shipbuilding industry in China. And uh, at this magical place, we are welcoming the undocking ceremony of the first domestically made cruise in China. That's really significant. We are pretty young. Since the establishment of our company, we made our presence in the market and participated in the competition to the full. We competed against overseas shipbuilders. And because of this cruise, we created a miracle. We produced maritime commodities and the civil commodities and also that's seldomly seen overseas. To many shipbuilders, this is almost impossible. In terms of design and building, to complete such a cruise, it's more than just shipbuilding. Behind it, there are a lot of complex systems. One cruise is in need of the entire industrial chain. For example, the propellant system, the power system, and all the other supportive systems are required. Cruise has high requirement in terms of noise control and uh, vibration control. It's different from the other products. Only when you have been present in the market, you will know about this product. Since we have undertaken similar projects in Europe, the production chain was mostly dominated by Europe. But now, Chinese companies and research institutes are trying to nationalize those systems. We hope that uh, such a big cruise could trigger thousands of suppliers to create a, a complete and independent industrial chain of shipbuilding. And in the future, they can contribute to the creation of almost hundreds of thousands of job opportunities. You speak out our minds. We hope that with this cruise, we can cultivate a team of professionals and set up a system of shipbuilding, and then cultivate a culture of cruise. In the early stage of uh, the cruise building, we called out for such a fighting spirit, the dedication spirit. We hope to foster such a culture in the future. Now, we are seeing this cruise to come close to the estuary of Yangtze River, and we can see a lot of boats sailing in the estuary. So, what is the situation on board? What else tasks will be carried out? Let's turn to my colleague on board, Li Ning.
Welcome back. I am standing on the stern deck, but the direction has a great change from previously. In the past time, the cruise is undocked. I can feel almost nothing staying on board. The cruise has taken a 90 degrees turn and the stern is facing eastward. Previously, we were facing to the south and north, but now we are standing east to the west. And in this turning process, it's very stable and steady. In the future, in the official operation, the cruise can withstand strong waves and wind with its steadiness. In addition to the weight of uh, the cruise, there will be a lot of uh, assistance from high technologies, helping the crews to stay steady against the strong winds and waves. Since the cruise is already undocked, our next destination is on the right side of our camera. That's number four and number five pyres. Since the cruise is very big, it has to occupy two pyres. We have invited Mr. Zhang Qiang and Pan Lei, the engineers of the ship. We are coming to the close of this ceremony, right? We are halfway. We have taken a different direction, and now we are trying to be anchored. It's going to be anchored very slowly. As I said, the speed ratio was 10 meters per minute during the undocking process. For the anchoring, the speed ratio will be less than 3 meters per minute, just in case of any clash against the pyres. What are the challenging points for the anchoring? Very quickly, we are going to be anchored at pyre number 4 and number 5. There are two boats in front of us. That's the parking point. It's very steady on board. But while we are anchoring, we will try to slow down to less than 3 meters per minute. After being anchored, there will be 26 ropes. We have to be able to withstand the grade 9 wind. We will use the ropes to, tie, to tighten the cruise. There are two barges. There may be some clashes of the lifeboats. And because of the water depths, the pyres, there will be some sludges under the water, and we need to go deep underwater. So we have to keep a distance from the pyre. And then we will also have to extend the platforms for the passage of the commodities and visitors. So it's coming to close of the ceremony. It's going to be anchored very soon. From this perspective, it's quite magnificent. I could see a lot of machines, like the cranes, in the distance.
Now we are standing on the deck of the stern. Uh, it's still trying to stay in the channel towards the right direction. We are basically in parallel with the pier. The tugboat is trying to tug it into number four and five pyres. Those tugboats have to cooperate. They cannot move very fast and they cannot uh, drag with too much strength. They have to have the correct angle. And then the ropes will fix this cruise. A lot of staff are waiting on the piers, ready to receive the ropes. In the next few months, we will see this cruise anchored there. Previously, at the pier of Baoshan, they can see such big sized cruises, but mostly those were imported elsewhere. But now we can have our own cruise anchored here at the pier. It's just like an advertisement for the docks. The tugboat is trying very hard to drag the cruise towards the pier. What else tasks will be conducted? And people are concerned about when can they get on board. After anchoring, there will be some commissioning at the piers. Some projects have to be carried out above the water. For example, the propellant testing, the power system commissioning must be completed at the piers. There will be 70 TMs documents to be completed. In the future, we must get ready for the test sale, and we must ensure 100% safety of the delivery. So the next milestone will be the test sale. That's right. Now we are trying to be anchored towards number four and number five pyres. And in the next one and a half hours, we will get ready the ropes. By 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, the power system will be resumed so that the crews will be ready for work, for construction. So it's very tight schedule. It has to be ready for construction tomorrow morning. We have to ensure that the crews will be back to production. We just hope that we can meet the deadline of the test sale. Now we can see the tugboat is testing the way. It's moving very slowly, about three minutes. What is the usual speed of the cruise in the future? 30 kilometers per hour. As to the boats, it's pretty fast. 30 kilometers per hour for such a big cruise. That's quite something. In the next month, it's going to be critical. 
For example, commissioning of the systems and internal designs and decorations will have to be completed in the next month. So if we come back one month later, there will be big changes internally. Actually, you can observe dif differences and changes almost every day coming on board because there are so many systems. If you lose tracks, you will observe big changes after several days. How many systems are there? About over 100 systems and 25 million parts. That's impressive. And as to cables, it's very long. We have calculated it. It's about uh, 4,500 kilometers. If you drag it and lay it down, it can connect with Xizang. And since this cruise will carry passengers compared to the boats for commodities or bulky commodities, there will be higher safety requirement. We have dual systems of safety in terms of the power devices, fire fighting systems, we have a backup system just in case. For such a big cruise, the building process is very difficult. Even more challenging than the building of aircraft carriers because we have to consider about comfort level. Uh, so the boat cannot be too noisy or too heavy to ensure the speed and comfort level. So there are about a 4 to 8 mm thickness of uh, the panels. And even the chimney is made from the aluminum alloy. Now we are standing on number 10 deck. On number 12 deck, they are made of the aluminum alloy to reduce the noise level. We have to reduce the weight because it's designed to carry a lot of uh, equipment like the beds and also the passengers. So using those very thin boards is very challenging. For example, distortion. For the thinner materials, they are prone to be distorted. For example, because of the stress, it's a heavy workload. That's why we had to control the uh, control the weight and the noise in the early stage of construction. In every cabin, the noise must be kept below 45 decibels. They have to sleep inside, so if it's too noisy, they cannot be up to the standards. It's a new task for us, but now we have conquered that technical difficulty in terms of weight control and noise reduction, as well as safe return. Those are three core technologies in the life cycle of a cruise. When we conducted the lifeboat test days ago, they were testing the broadcasting system in the cabins. They say that there are 1,600 alarm points on the cruise. Basically, the sensors and the monitor systems are everywhere on the cruise to ensure safety. For the commodity cruise or boats, they have uh, less alarm points. Since we are designed to transport passengers, there must be high requirement of fire extinguishing, the exit, and so on. Speaking of alarm system, the firefighting doors also standing large number. We have over 1,000 such doors, the excavation doors, in the case of a fire. So it's easy to get lost. Now, 
Our crews is still moving slowly to the piers, and it will take some time before anchoring. That's about what I observe on the stern deck. Welcome back to number two pyre. Standing next to me is Mr. Yang Xin. So, how is everything going on? Faster or slower than expected? Thanks to the weather and our efforts, we are actually getting faster than scheduled. The direction of the cruise is in parallel of the pyre, and we're just waiting for the anchoring. The dock gate is about to resume its previous position. It's earlier than we expected, as Mr. Yang said, thanks to the waves and the weather is going on very smoothly. The reason we choose the afternoon, that's also because of our calculations of the waves. Usually, the highest um, water level comes at about 1 to 2 p.m. And usually, the water flow is more steady. That can help us to ensure safety. As the cruise is sailing in the main channel of Yangtze River, the weather is even clearer. Very soon, it's going to be anchored. At number three pier, the containers directly are placed on the pier, but for the cruise, there are two barges. So why not direct anchored at the pier? Because we have to rely on the barges to extend another 30 meters to keep a distance between the cruise and the pier. We have reformed the two barges, especially for this cruise. We have also done some productive covers. So by that you mean this pyre has been specially designed for the cruise anchoring. That's right. And I'm really curious 
After being anchored at the piers, how long will this cruise stay? And what tasks will be carried out? After undocking, the cruise will be anchored. And during the anchoring phase, we will carry out three jobs. The first one is the regular commissioning above the water, for example, propellant and the power testing. Also in the open water, we will have an evacuation test. That system is unavailable in other boats. Let's try to find out that system later on in our camera. The third one is when the cruise is floating on the water, it will receive even force and there may be some distortions. Systems like the ladders and the ceilings, they have to be put in the usual state of operation. There will be some functional tests for those systems above the water as well. In the meantime, in the anchoring stage, there will be two test sails. Before the test sails, we will have to complete other commissioning jobs to ensure safe sailing. What systems are involved? Power, service systems, fuel testing, acceleration system, and safety system. For example, remote sensing, broadcasting, firefighting, communication, navigation, and radio systems, also lighting, ventilation, garbage treatment, sewage treatment. We also have to carry out some internal decorations jobs. Even though they do not belong to test sales project, in the future the biggest selling point of the cruise is about the public areas on board. For example, the atrium, theater, catering, and uh, the uh, swimming pools, the entertainment. That's why those systems will have to be commissioned and tested during the anchoring phase. We are also curious about the timetable of delivery. You mentioned about two test sales. What are the different priorities of the two test sales? As usual, there will be two test sales for the cruises. The first test sale is to test the platform functions, for example, propelling system, like side propelling and a coordinated uh, control system. Also, since there is no big power device, we have to also test the power systems of the engines. Because of the high requirement of the water depths, we will also have such a anchoring test and the telecommunication and navigation test in the first sale. We will also lean more towards the noise test and vibration test in the public areas. In the second trial, we will test the speed of the sailing and the control system, as well as the final test of the noise control and reduction. Since we have a very high requirement of the noise reduction, for example, in the cabins, there must be less than 50 decibels of noise. And because of privacy, even between the cabins, there will be high demands for noise reduction. And uh, in the first sale test, we must test the abnormalities of the noise. And then we must readjust to ensure the noise level is within control and below the cap in the second test sale. And 
for some functional problems, we must try to solve it after the test sale. From where I am standing, it's unable for me to see the cruise with inside. That's mainly because the cruise is getting very close to the designated buyers. We cannot see it anymore. It must be moving closely to the piers, to the barges. And on the outside, there are three tugboats. Two boats are at the stern and the nose. The other one is on the side of the cruise. The one on the side is to offer the power. The two tugboats on the front and the one behind the cruise are for protection purposes. And in the middle, on the side, that tugboat is to offer power during the anchoring process. The other four are to localize the position. So mainly, the cruise relies on the tugboat standing on the side for the power system. We can see the entertainment facilities from above. We can see four big ceilings in the middle. I hear that the ceilings can be open. That's right. That's the main entertainment area. We have such a beach club. There will be swimming pools, stages for performances, a lot of cultural activities and entertainment activities will be done there. So despite the weather conditions, that public area can be available. Even when in bad weather conditions, the club activities can go on as scheduled. Now this public area is covered. On the right side of the four ceilings, we can see such a water activities area. For example, we could see the slides above water. And uh, it connects two layers of decks. Also, the passengers can enjoy sunbathing on top. There is such a sports area right next to the chimney. It's in the front of the chimney, sorry, at the back of the chimney. That's the basketball court. If you prefer playing basketball, you could come to that area. Close to the stern, I can see two balls. Are the two balls meteorological devices? Actually, there are two balls in the front. Those are the antennas for telecommunication. We have to consider the telecommunication need to ensure safety of the sailing. And also, we need to use our mobile phones for those passengers in need of uh, wire services. They rely on the antennas to surf on the internet and also communicate with their family members. I hear that this is also the first cruise with 5G coverage. That's right. China Telecom supported us with the 5G facilities. Now let's look toward the stern of the cruise. Right behind the two signal balls, according to my knowledge, uh, there are swimming pools behind. That's right, the outdoor swimming pools. All the cruises are equipped with outdoor swimming pools. Travelers choosing cruise travel prefers slow pace. 
They just want to stay on board to enjoy the sunshine, proper sports exercises, taste delicious food, and appreciate some shows. Compared to visiting the different uh, tourism destinations, it's more slow pace. It's more about leisure. That's right. That's why there will be a lot of offerings of uh, food and entertainment on board the cruise so that the visitors could have one-stop services. Their basic needs can be met on board. There are 2,000 cabins for their choice, and there are dozens of restaurants. I hear there are the gym, theaters. In the front of uh, the cruise, we can see the transparent areas. That's the gym. At the back of the gym, that's for spa, the favorite of many girls. So we can feel free to enjoy spa services and so on. You have very complete offerings of services. From above, we can see the crew seem to have uh, two eyes. Are those rooms connected with the captain's room? That's like uh, the two wings of the crews just like the wings of an eagle. They are at, uh, there with the same width of the boat, so that uh, when the cruise is sailing in a narrow channel and when the cruise is leaving the dock, uh, people working inside the two rooms can observe the position very closely. And also, they will help to monitor the anchoring system. There will be a camera in the front to observe and monitor the position of the pier and the cruise. Now we can see that Adora Magic City is coming very close to the pyres. On the two barges, two channels have been ready for the passage of commodities and staff. On docking and uh, connection of uh, the cruise and the dock are going on. Orderly. After anchoring, we will try to resume the flow of uh, commodities and uh, passengers so that uh, tomorrow morning all of the shipbuilders can come back to their work on board and off board, as well as the materials. To build a cruise, it's like building such a moving city on top of the ocean. It's a very complex project. Yesterday in our live show, we have visited an intelligent warehouse for resource distribution. All parts, including 25 million parts, have gone through that distribution center. In the process, we hope to minimize the turnover time of those parts and improve the turnover ratio. It's a complex system. Now we are seeing this cruise coming close to the anchoring points, and Mr. Yang Xin introduced to us that uh, three ladders are getting ready on the barges. 
，在画面中应该看到的是黄色的条状的三条。黄色过桥是。The yellow-colored passages are for the flow of people and commodities. Here is Shanghai Pudong, White Gao Chao. We can see the first European exports. Now, Adora Magic City is on top. And is about to be anchored to the designated places. On the left, we can see the buyers. That's also part of the free trade area in Shanghai. There is no boat in number two pier. So what work will be done here? The gates are back to the original places. Then they will try to have a water effusion. And uh, rearrange for the product requirements. So the new boats are ready. In such a hurry, the docks are rare resources. We hope to minimize the cycle of docking. For the shipbuilders with the same capacity, within limited time, they can make more boats. Actually, at the upper right corner, you can see something. Today, the undocking of the first uh, independently made cruise in China signifies that uh, the main project has been completed. Next stage will be about uh, the commissioning of the systems and the delivery. Allow me to introduce the steps this afternoon with nine Tug boats coming to help. The first independently made cruise comes out of the pier number two. And since June the 1st, this cruise has undergone a series of tests like lifeboats and uh, hosing tests. And all of the tests were a complete success. The cruise will be docked, and as um, scheduled, by the end of this year, it's going to be delivered and be put into commercial operation next year. As to the route planning, the marketization, and the product design relevant to this cruise, they are going on simultaneously. Two tugboats in the front and the, at the back are dragging towards the direction against the pier. 
That means the tugboats are trying to slow down. Very close to the pier. That's why the cruise speed has been cut to ensure steady anchoring. I would love to disseminate one basic knowledge. Sailing of the big cruises must be slow. The speed is a different thing compared to the parking of automobiles. It seems that the cruise is very close to the pier, but it still takes some time for anchoring. Since it's very big, there will be high requirements of birth. Not all crews can accomplish this process based on its own power system. The majority of them require assistance. If the docking speed is too big, there will be a huge impact over the pyres. That's why it's moving very slowly right now. We can see the reflection of lights on top of uh, the river.
Is it uh, docked yet? Now it's changing its final position. For example, that will matter to the boarding position in the future. Nine tugboats participate in the tugging. All the other tugboats have accomplished their tasks. Now there are only five plus one tugboats staying on vigilance right now. The number two pier gate is let down. You can hear the clicking of the gate. The cruise will come to its designated position very soon. Now let's turn to my colleague on board Li Ming. From above the deck, we have a very clear view. The cruise is about to be docked. Even the two barges are big enough. It's about to be anchored very soon. The barges are 30 meters wide. Why not directly anchor against the bank? As you can see, we need the two barges for the parking of the cruise. Otherwise, there may be obstacles. For example, the cruise may clash against the crane. And also, we have to consider the draft. The ropes are getting ready. Our ropes will be tied. We fix the crews with the ropes. Just in case that uh, the cruise may float away. So you fix both ends of the cruise with the ropes. Previously at pier number two, what about now? You fix only one end, the front left. Why did we fix it at two points? Because we have to pull from the left and the right. That's why we need two ropes to fix the cruise previously. Usually for anchoring, we need only one rope to fix the cruise. That's sufficient. There must be a lot of ropes required. Will this be time consuming? There are 26 ropes for anchoring. It takes about one and a half hour. The lifeboats block our view. It seems to be moving still. Only one meter distance. If it's successfully docked, that represents successful completion of uh, this undocking ceremony. 
Since I stand on board, this entire process has been very steady. A lot of facilities, like the lifeboats, 20 more lifeboats are within our site. Every lifeboat can accommodate 314 people. So that's about a total of uh, 6,000 passengers to be carried by the lifeboats. Will the white rope mount on the cruise? That's for the barges to pull the cruise towards the pier. We will adopt the 26 ropes to fix this cruise. The two yellow-colored ropes are already tied at the poles at the pier. So the anchoring is completed. Now they are tying the ropes. How do they throw the ropes? Are they thrown out? There is a ball. They throw the ball and then drag the ropes. I was just curious. So this entire process goes on as scheduled, almost with no time difference. As scheduled, it's supposed to be anchored at 3 p.m. And now uh, the, rope, the ropes are being tied at 3.13. I see my colleague, but I cannot tell who is it. We are very distant. The cruise is like uh, the height of uh, over 10 stories, 11 decks after all. If we calculate uh, the layers, the height below the water is even higher. The height is 70 meters, and the length is 323 meters. The width is 37 meters. I see a lot of staff on the nose. They are waiting for the ropes, and one tugboat is coming near. Is the tugboat carrying the ropes? Can you see the ropes? Yes. The ropes cannot be thrown because of the long distance. And the tugboat carries the ropes. So as long as we can fix the front and the back, that's OK. That's right. Even the ropes have high technological contents. They are made of uh, high molecules. That's why they are very thin. 
The barges are not big. And uh, if you look at the ropes tying on the barges, they are much thicker than our ropes. That's because we hope to reduce weight on the cruise. The usual ropes are three times thicker than ours. Those thick ropes take a lot of space and they also are heavier. So since then, before 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, there will be a lot of system commissioning so that uh, the crews will be ready for a lot more tests. Tomorrow we will have the lighting test and power, wind, gas will be resumed on board so that uh, the production job could continue as normal. That's very limited time. Before the test sale, the first test sale, there were only less than two months left. We need to do a lot of job. The test sale requires the crews to be exactly in the same state as when it's put into operation. We have to ensure the speed in the trial. That leaves us about 40 days. There will be heavy workload on us. We have to do our best. You have even worked overtime, day and night. That's just the last step towards success. On the nose, I can see several staff pulling the ropes. The yellow ropes are to fix the nose of this uh, cruise. After tying the ropes on the cruise nose, that uh, represents the end of uh, this entire process. Of course, after anchoring, there will be the preparation of the bridges, the platforms for the free flow of people and commodities, and we will have to resume some other systems like the power system. Very soon, this pier is going to be a busy place. There will be a lot of uh, vehicles carrying things on board. We started our live streaming since 2 a.m. on June the 1st. On June the 1st, we test the floating and uh, the water fails. Those are the basic functionalities, for example, floating of the cruise. And in the next several days, we have witnessed a lot of uh, important tests, for example, the lifeboat test, the hosing test, and today it's another milestone. So these several days have been very important before operation. And those are important milestones that have uh, been accomplished successfully. Before the official operation, there was still some time left. In the future, at important milestones, we will also try to live stream this first independently made cruise. So that's about all on board.
Welcome back to number two pyre. According to our aerial shot, Adora Magic City has been anchored at the designated pyre. At this moment, the ropes are being tied. What else tasks will be carried out? We will also invite Deputy General Manager Yang Xin to introduce more details. What do you think of the position of this crews now? Now they are tying the ropes. In the future, more ropes will tie the crews to our pyre. Upon finishing tying the ropes, that will represent the end of today's job of undocking. Which move can represent the end? Of undocking. When the final rope is tied, that signifies the end of undocking. Okay. The sky is getting clearer, and um, we can see the position of this boat. A lot of staff are preparing. Are the staff ready to get on board? That's right. Actually, a lot of materials are ready to be passed on board. For example, the green area is the platform for the transportation of materials. And also there will be some passes for the people flow. This cruise will be put into the production state very soon. Tonight, all of those corridors or platforms will be resumed and the power system will be back on to ensure production tomorrow morning. It takes about 30 months for the manufacturing of this cruise, from the cutting of the steel panel to the undocking today. We've been through a lot. Many people have contributed to this cruise, and many Chinese people are paying close attention to this first independently made cruise. So how do you feel right now? It's really hard one. From cutting the steel panel to making flat the thin panels, we've faced many difficulties. At all the critical moments, for example, the floating, undocking, we strictly accord to the plans. From cutting the first steel panel to undocking today, we have prepared a video. Now let's uh, review the entire process. On docking is about making the cruise to float on water and pull it out of the dock in order to be anchored 
at the pier for the big cruise in China. Being undocked means that the main facilities and pipelines have been assembled. For all the boats, undocking is a very important stage. Usually for the water to float on the water, that's the first element for the operation of the boat. After all, it has to be able to float on top of the water, and the performance of the boat is good. The pier has witnessed the entire process of this cruise manufacturing. Leaving the pier means that it's ready. To ensure best performance of this cruise, we have to go through several rounds of safety checks. There will be three tests before undocking, leaning test, hosing test, and lifeboat test. Based on the weather conditions, we will judge if the cruise is ready for the tests. As the leaning test is mainly about calculating the gravity of this cruise. After construction of uh, the boats, this is a necessary test for the big cruises because the gravity will influence safety of the entire boat in the testing process. We have very high precision requirement of the gravity. Because large cruise has a huge infrastructure at the upper layers, 